I'll go to member statements. Member from Niagara West. Thank you very much, Speaker. I'm grateful to stand in the legislature today as the returning member for Niagara West, and I wish to thank once again the voters of Niagara West for placing their trust in me to represent their concerns, priorities, and values at the, in the halls of Queen's Park. Throughout the campaign, I listened very closely to the priorities of the people of Niagara West, and I want to ensure that those are the priorities I'm advocating for here. Rebuilding the economy. Across Niagara West, job creators, families and workers spoke about the need to reduce taxes, invest in manufacturing, and cut red tape for businesses in our communities to create good jobs in Niagara West. Keeping Ontario open. Constituents I spoke with emphasized the need to build up our health care system, hire more nurses, invest in home care and therapeutics to support patients and their families, and keep Ontario open for good. Keeping costs down. Across Niagara West, constituents spoke about looking forward to seeing measures such as cutting the gas tax, keeping license plate sticker fees off their vehicles, and scrapping road tolls to make life more affordable, and building key infrastructure. From building our new hospital to new roads and bridges in Pelham and West Lincoln, to the construction of a GO station in Grimsby, new schools in Lincoln, a renovated community centre in Waynefleet, I heard about the need for continued investment in key infrastructure projects. Speaker, I look forward to continuing to work to ensure that the priorities, needs and values of the people of Niagara West are brought here, and I am thankful to work on their behalf for another four years. Thank you very much. Member from London North Centre. Speaker, I'd like to take this opportunity to celebrate the Ontario Human Rights Commission's ruling that landlords cannot ban air conditioning as access to cooling during heat, extreme heat waves is a human rights issue. It's long been a health issue, and now it is finally recognized as a human right. As the number of extreme heat waves increases, the right to accessible and safe housing must include air conditioning. Extreme heat makes life unbearable and is extremely dangerous, especially for seniors and those living with disabilities. Despite empty words in 2020, the Ford government has failed to deliver air conditioning for seniors in long-term care. This government has failed seniors time and again. The, the Commission grimly notes, Extreme heat caused by climate change is killing people. In London, tenants like the folks at Huron Gardens have been organizing to protect their most vulnerable neighbours from extreme heat. The Ontario Human Rights Commission is now calling on this government to include air conditioning as a vital service, like the provision of heat. The Ontario NDP were well ahead of the curve, fighting to protect Ontarians from extreme heat, and I look forward to supporting my colleague, the MPP for University of Rosedale's motion, when she retables it. I encourage all members to vote in support of this motion. Thank you. Thank you very much. The member from Stelmont, Dundas, and South Glengarry. Speaker, congratulations on the election to your role. As this is my first time humbly rising in the chamber, I'd like to thank the residents of Stormont, Dundas, and South Glengarry for having the faith in myself representing our riding and needs. Most who know me know I am a passionate and committed advocate for mental health, both for youth and adults alike. I'd like to thank the Minister of Health, Sylvia Jones, for announcing with me last week six new safe beds in my riding for people in crisis to heal and recover in a safe environment. As we all know, fairs and events are back and thriving in our ridings. These events help with our own and our neighbours' mental health to be able to socialize and gather as a community. Whether it's Canada's oldest fair at 211 years, the Williamstown Fair, the Avonmore Fair or the South Mountain Fair, it takes an army of dedicated volunteers to organize these important events. Thank you to all who helped bring back this sense of normalcy in our lives. My riding, as well as many others, were successful in receiving funds from the Reconnect Festivals and Events Program from the Ministry of Tourism, Culture and Support to restart these important events in our communities, both economically and for the mental health of those we serve. Thank you. Thank you very much. The member from Hamilton Mountain. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Speaker. I've been hearing from health care professionals in my riding of Hamilton Mountain about the devastation happening to our local hospitals. A local nurse reached out to my office to share her concerns, and her message was sadly not surprising. She told me our health care system is falling apart before our very eyes. Our province has abandoned all health care workers. They're constantly short-staffed, working long hours with a high patient-to-staff ratio. Patient care is being put at risk due to this government's lack of respect and underfunding of our health care system. 
She asked me to call on this government to repeal Bill 124 to ensure health care workers are paid accordingly. Health care workers should be allowed to negotiate fair wages for their work, but Bill 124 is keeping them from doing that. I'm calling on the Premier and his government to immediately repeal Bill 124. Health care workers have been the backbone of this pandemic. They've put themselves, their own safety, the health of their families, all at risk. They deserve fair compensation for their work. The Premier needs to do the right thing and repeal Bill 124 immediately. Statements. The member from Cambridge. I'd like to congratulate everybody on their re-election, including the Speaker of the House. The riding of Cambridge consists of two unique communities that I represent, the City of Cambridge and the Township of North Dumfries. As one of the fastest growing areas in Ontario, the City of Cambridge is located along the 401 and is part of Waterloo Region. It's a place with vitality, innovation and quality of life. The City of Cambridge is only minutes to the regional uh, airport in Waterloo and only 50 minutes to Toronto Pearson, depending on traffic. <laughs> the City of Cambridge was incorporated in 1973 when the three municipalities of Galt, Preston and Hespler and the settlement of Blair were amalgamated into a single legal entity under a new name. A new name that was not really that new because Preston used to be called Cambridge Mills. Each of these communities possess a long and proud history. A healthy sense of rivalry has always governed relations among the three communities. Even today, our residents will tell the outside world they live in Cambridge and call that home, but they identify themselves from the area that they came from, Galt, Preston and Hessler. While the original communities had come together well in the years since amalgamation, uh, they began life apart, and as a result, Cambridge is not blessed with one historical downtown, but three, and we're preserving this for future generations. Cambridge is well poised to continue to flourish into a prosperous uh, city and one of the best places to live in Ontario. The region of Waterloo is one of the Ontario's fastest growing and economical, economically uh, prosperous areas. Now, welcome to the picturesque township of North Dumfries. North Dumfries is mainly an agricultural community. Its quaint location, proximity to large economic centres along the 401, as well as accessibility to the Canadian Pacific's main rail line, makes the township of North Thank Dumfries the ideal place to live, work and play. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Member statements. The member for Timiskaming Cochrane. Thank you, Speaker. I would like to uh, uh, update the House on a potential environmental issue that's happening right now in the Township of Armstrong in Temiskaming District. Last year, a uh, sewage lagoon for raw human sewage was approved on a former dairy farm in the former dairy lagoon. A company from Quebec is importing that sewage. Why the neighbours found out when the trucks started coming. Part of the process is consultation. Many of the neighbours were not consulted at all. Had they been consulted, the ministry would have known that there was a well in the property because it was a former dairy farm. When we asked the ministry if they'd look for that well, and if the consultant had looked for that well, we, the response was there was no well on that property. We are still waiting for answers from the ministry because the ministry also said it wasn't a former dairy lagoon, yet in the plans of the site, the lagoon was enlarged. And also there is no actual proof that the piping that, that came from the barn to the lagoon was ever removed. And we are quickly losing faith, not in the consultants, but in the ministry to actually protect the health and welfare of people in Northern Ontario. And if they can't do it on little projects, God knows what they're going to do on big projects. So we need, we need their help right now to assure that people are being, that things are going to be safe. Thank you. Thank you. 
The member for Sault Ste. Marie. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Yesterday, I coached my nine-year-old son's soccer team, the Sioux City Junior United, in the finals of the Grand Rapids Cup, where we found ourselves trailing 3-0 at halftime against the BC Fire of Saginaw. After my best, my best Vince Lombardi impression at halftime, our boys took to the field and within minutes had managed to score our first goal, bringing the game to within two. A newfound sense of resiliency overtook us even after Saginaw responded with a goal of their own to restore their three-goal lead. Over the next 30 minutes, we played a full-court press like you've never seen before. We scored four straight goals and took the lead 5-4. to four. And then, with just over a minute left to play, on Saginaw's first shot in what seemed like an eternity, they scored, and once again the game was tied. Teams started prepping for penalty shots. I heard the referee's alarm go off, and as he checked his watch and brought the whistle to his mouth, in what seemed like the most harmless of plays, one of my boys kicked the balls out for a corner kick. The ref decided to let them take that corner kick even though time had expired, and you can probably guess what happened. A weird bounce, the ball was in the net, the ref blew the whistle, the game was over. We lost 6-5. to five. We were all in disbelief. Our boys played their hearts out. They gave it their all, but they came short. My favourite part of coaching kids is that there are so many life lessons that come out of it. This past weekend's lesson is that sometimes in life, regardless of how hard you work, you just fall short. And that's okay, because you truly cannot win them all, and nothing is perfect. But as Lombardi himself said, chase perfection and catch excellence. And my boys were excellent this weekend, and I'm beaming with pride because of it. Thank you very much. Member Statements, the member for Scarborough Guildwood. Mr. Speaker, it's always an honour to rise on behalf of the, my constituency in Scarborough Guildwood. Yet today, my heart hurts. Gun violence is a public health issue that leaves long-term impacts on our communities. It touches all of us. As provincial leaders, this is our problem, and we must do more to break cycles of violence and help communities to heal. We know that exposure to gun violence has mental and physical health impacts that extend far beyond the victims. We know gun violence traumatizes people and leaves a trail of sorrow in its, work, in its wake. And we know that without access to long-term supports, it leads to generational trauma. This past April, I was deeply concerned and saddened by a drive-by shooting that took place in Scarborough. After midnight prayers, a group was heading back to their vehicles when shots rung out and five young men were struck by bullets in a brazen attack. Fortunately, no lives were lost. However, I know from speaking with the victims and their families that the aftermath of this random act of violence still affects them and our community today. It's a problem that Bill 9, the, Bill, the Safe and Healthy Communities Act, would bridge. By declaring gun violence a public health issue, my private member's bill would allow for trauma-informed counselling and supports for survivors. Speaker, I urge all members of this House on September the 7th to make the change that we so desperately need by supporting Bill 9. Thank you. Member Statements. The member for Mississauga, Arendelle. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. This is my first time to rise in the 43rd session of the Ontario Parliament. I want to congratulate you for re-election and also congratulate each and every MPP for election or re-election. I want to start by thanking the constituents of Mississauga, Erin Mills, for renewing their trust in me. It is my honour to represent the people of Mississauga and Mills, and I will take this opportunity to reaffirm my commitment since day one, is to be their voice in this respect as legislative and deliver their opinions and concerns. Mr. Speaker, the people of Ontario has spoken. Under the leadership of Premier Ford, people believe in our side of the House. They see that we are the only ones that can get it done for families, for putting more money into people's pockets. We are the only side that say yes for building homes, yes for reducing fees, yes to reduce taxes, yes to building highways, and yes to create sustainable and efficient healthcare system that serve all the people of this great province. 
Mr. Speaker, it's very important that the federal government raise to their health care spending share to Ontario to 35 per cent of the funding. It has been agreed over the years that just the provincial funding is not enough to deliver sustainable health care to Ontario, the Ontario deserve, Mr. Speaker. We are challenging the status quo and building the province after so many years of neglect and reposting our economy to recovery from the pandemic. Mr. Speaker, the people of Ontario can depend on this side of the House to always do the right thing. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Member statements. Member for Simcoe Gray. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Hopefully, I'll get an opportunity to finish what I start this time. I rise to speak as a member for Simcoe Gray, and it's a great honour to be here today and to, uh, as part of a house that is prepared to get things done and to improve lives for our residents of our province. As a member for Simcoe Gray, I want to speak briefly about my riding. A population over 152,000 consists of seven municipalities, six in Simcoe Gray and one in Gray County. And I want to highlight this morning the ways in which those municipalities are working together collaboratively to serve their residents effectively and efficiently, something that this government has been working hard with our residents and our lower tier governments to make happen. We know that there's only one taxpayer, and I want to congratulate each of these municipalities for their initiative and their leadership. On Friday, my colleague from Bruce Gray, MPP Byers, and I attended a meeting with the mayors and CAOs of Collingwood, Wasega Beach, Clearview, Town of Blue Mountains, and Meaford to discuss their works regionally to address issues relating to transportation and housing, issues that are very compelling and pressing for all of our residents. Last week, both the Council of Collingwood and New Tecumseh approved the renewal of the water supply agreement that will continue and expand the supply of safe and abundant drinking water from Georgian Bay to the residents of New Tecumseh. Speaker, these are just two examples of how my municipalities are working very hard collaboratively to provide effective and efficient governance for their residents. Thank you. Thank you. That concludes our member statements for this morning.